Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is review the F8 SSD Plus from TerraMaster. And this is the second NAS unit that's been sent into the studio for review in less than a week. So needless to say, I've been very busy. Anyway, like I mentioned, I'm going to be reviewing the F8 SSD Plus, which is an all SSD NAS unit that's incredibly tiny. It features an eight core CPU, eight M.2 NVMe slots, as well as 10 gigabit ethernet. So I was definitely very excited to check this unit out. But before we dive in, I just wanted to give you guys a quick disclaimer, the usual disclaimer. TerraMaster sent this unit into the studio for review, but as always, all the thoughts in this video are going to be completely my own. In fact, TerraMaster was not allowed to screen this video before you guys got a chance to see it first. Anyway, I'm really excited to dive in, so let's do that right now. All right, so let's dive in. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the smallest NAS unit that I've ever reviewed on this channel that wasn't a Raspberry Pi. The F8 SSD Plus is roughly the same size as four Blu-ray cases stacked. And while that sounds pretty cool, it's also probably obvious that it's able to be this small only because it supports NVMe SSDs, which take up a very small footprint. The build quality of this unit is best described as adequate. Like the previous TerraMaster unit I reviewed, it seems good enough without standing out. When it comes to ports, on the back of the unit we have three USB 3.2 ports, with one of them being Type-C. There's also a single 10 gig Ethernet port on the back, which should definitely help boost transfer speeds for those of you that have compatible hardware. To access the inside of the unit, there's a single thumb screw that you remove, and then you simply slide the inside frame out of its plastic housing. Looking around on the inside, you'll see a total of eight M.2 NVMe slots with four on each side of the motherboard. You'll also notice the fan arrangement, which I think is fairly smart. On the bottom of the unit, there's tall rubber feet, which lifts the unit a bit away from the surface. The fans pull in air from the bottom and then exhaust it out through the top vent. I think this is a fairly effective way of getting rid of heat, but it does bring up an important note. Due to its design, placement is fairly important, so as long as it's standing upright, you should be fine. Next, let's talk about the setup process. Setting up the F8 SSD Plus is done similarly to how you'd set up any other NAS device, following the same basic workflow, albeit with an annoyance that I'll be mentioning shortly. With this unit, you'll begin by removing the single thumb screw that I mentioned earlier that keeps the internal frame attached to its outer shell. Once you do that, you'll see the NVMe slots with numbered labels that'll give you the order of installation. Starting with the first slot, you'll add however many NVMe's you happen to have on hand and then, well, replace the cover. After you do that, you simply attach the included network cable and AC adapter, and the device should show up on your network. Once it does, you'll access the web console from its IP address, and a setup wizard will guide you through the process of installing the operating system and initializing your drives. Basically, setting up the F8 SSD Plus is fairly straightforward, but when it comes to installing the SSDs, well, that was kind of a pain. Essentially, the way the process plays out is you'll attach an included thermal pad and heatsink to each of your SSDs, and then you'll screw them into an empty slot. But the problem, though, is that the heatsinks are attached to your NVMe drives by rubber bands. Seriously. The overall design of the F8 SSD Plus is pretty good, actually, until you get to this point. Up to this point, you only had to remove a single screw to access the inside. You had clearly labeled NVMe slots so you know the order in which to fill them, just to have you start using rubber bands. I mean, sure, it works, but I'm not sure how long rubber bands actually last, but it wouldn't be great if one of them snapped and fell into the fan, shorted the fan, and then the entire unit. I mean, that's a bit of a stretch to be sure, but I'm just not sure how comfortable I am with rubber bands as a long-term solution. In fact, I've had at least three of them break while I was installing SSDs, and they actually give you extras for this very reason because they're likely to break during install. I would have preferred something a little bit more solid when it comes to attaching the heat sinks, but here we are. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to take a moment and let you know that I have a brand new course available, this time covering Ansible. My new 20 episode course covers all the basics of Ansible, such as entering commands, writing playbooks, refactoring plays into roles, encrypting and decrypting files, and much more. The course is full of hands-on examples to keep you engaged, and by the end of the course, you'll be able to use Ansible in your daily workflow. 
In fact, I'll even cover lesser known features such as Ansible Pull. On the screen right now is a URL you could use to go directly to the course and start learning Ansible. In each lesson, I'll break down each component into easy to understand explanations, and along the way, you'll get real experience with Ansible. In fact, with over 20 years of experience in the industry, you'll be learning Ansible the way that it's actually used in real data centers. For example, I'll also teach you the basics of version control along with Ansible during this course, since it's very common that the two will be used together. So, check out my course and learn Ansible. You won't regret it. Now, let's get back to the video. Anyway, let's talk about the operating system that's included with this device. Once you power on the unit for the very first time, you'll perform the actual setup within your web console. First, the device will install the operating system itself, which is called TerraMaster OS, or TOS for short. This process takes about 10 minutes or so, so it's not all that bad. Once that's done, it'll bring up a little walkthrough for the initial configuration, which will guide you through setting it up. One thing that's interesting to note here is that it offers to send you a confirmation code to verify your account, which doesn't actually work. The code never comes. But then there's also a skip button, so this isn't actually required. Once I click that, I went on to the next step and on from there. So I'm not sure why they are asking for a confirmation via email if that feature doesn't actually work. But then again, I was able to move on without it, and it worked just fine, so I guess it's optional. Anyway, during the process, you'll also get a confirmation to set up your SSDs. It'll default to T-RAID, which is a TerraMaster-specific RAID array that gives you the ability to mix or match drive sizes, which could be very useful for those of you that have multiple SSDs lying around needing a purpose. Or you could bypass T-RAID and go for something more conventional if that doesn't apply to you. For me, initialization of my array took about two hours or so, which for me is fairly reasonable. It's certainly a lot faster than the F4424 Max, which I reviewed previously, which took over 24 hours. Then again, of course, NVMEs are going to initialize faster than standard hard drives, so that's a given. The operating system itself is fairly good. I've heard a lot of people say that TOS has improved quite a bit from previous versions, but this is only the second TerraMaster unit that I've reviewed, so I'm kind of new to the platform. My initial impression is that TOS is fairly decent, giving you the ability to do just about everything you'd want to do with a NAS. It even has advanced features, such as giving you the ability to run virtual machines and also deploy containers. I think for the majority of people, TOS checks all the boxes. The only thing that might bother some people is that it doesn't do anything other NAS platforms, such as OpenMediaVault and TrueNAS, are able to do. In fact, those would offer even more features than TOS. But then again, if TOS checks all of your boxes, then it's good enough and you may not actually need anything else. If you decide later that you want to use a more advanced platform, then you can simply swap it out. Just be aware that TerraMaster has a notice on their website that doing so voids your warranty, even though that's not true from a legal perspective. Still, that's something you'll need to decide for yourself if it's something you want to respect or not. But again, TOS is pretty good, so I at least recommend giving it a shot before you install something else. You might even like it. Next, let's talk about specs and performance. The hardware on this model is actually really good. We have an 8-core CPU, the i3 N305, and it clocks in at 3.4 gigahertz. There's 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory on board, which is expandable, as well as a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. And also, like I mentioned, there's eight M.2 NVMe slots for all of your drives. So yes, the machine is very powerful, and having an all-SSD solution is really cool. You could benefit from increased transfer speeds, and it opens up additional doors with added performance, especially considering how much better virtual machines will run while backed by SSD storage. The biggest limitation, I think, is the fact that there's only a single 10 gig Ethernet port, which I think is a major bummer. Having multiple ports increases the flexibility of NAS devices, giving you the ability to better separate services and take full advantage of VLANs. You could always attach USB Ethernet adapters, but when you're paying for a device at its price point, attaching USB dongles just feels very hacky. Also, as great as it is to have 10 gig Ethernet, it's also very easy to saturate the connection. Just a few NVMe slots being fully utilized would do exactly that. Due to that, you have to have reasonable expectations with performance on this unit. Yes, performance is really good, but how good it actually is depends on what you're doing with it. With the virtual machine example that I mentioned earlier, local storage for VMs would be very fast. But as soon as data starts going in or out of the Ethernet port, that's when your mileage starts to vary. I don't want to overly fixate on this, though, but it's important to keep in mind that with a single port, you have to have reasonable expectations. Speaking of price, the F8 SSD Plus comes in at just shy of $800. US 
And while I feel that's reasonable for an all NVMe device with 10 gig Ethernet, I again would have preferred at least another Ethernet port. It just seems like such a wasted opportunity. Anyway, my overall opinion of the F8 SSD Plus is that it's a very good machine, and if you buy one, you'll probably love it. There's a lot you could do with it out of the box. The built-in operating system will serve most of your needs, and even if not, you could technically install another operating system as long as you're aware of TerraMaster's warning on doing so. When it comes to build quality, it's mostly okay with a clumsy process for installing SSDs. The unit itself and its housing is solid, yet it's not going to win any design awards. Then again, considering NAS units typically sit partially hidden on bookshelves anyway, that may not matter to most people. Like I mentioned earlier though, installing SSDs is where the build quality takes a bit of a dip, with included rubber bands holding the heatsinks to the SSDs. My main concern here is that I question whether or not that's a good idea for the long term. And like I mentioned earlier, I broke three rubber bands during the installation process of the SSDs. And, well, that's why they give you extras. Getting back to the price, though, for $800, I'd say the price is very reasonable. The F8 SSD Plus is a tiny NAS unit that's just a little larger than a Sega Genesis game case. Inside this small shell is room for eight SSDs backed by a 10 gig Ethernet port. Again, the only hesitation that I have with this unit is the rubber bands. It's such a weird design quirk, especially when everything else seems like it was designed fairly well. I really don't know whether or not it's going to be a great solution for the long term, but it is something to be aware of. But if you do order this device, I think you're going to love it. Yes, it only has one 10 gig Ethernet port, but if that doesn't matter to you, you'll get pretty good performance out of this unit. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this review or just ask me a Linux question down in the comments below. I'm working on some very awesome videos for you guys, if I do say so myself. So definitely subscribe to see those videos as soon as they're released. And I'll see you in the next video.